guys, it's Crystal, and today I'm gonna show you what's on my MacBook Pro. And that cool little intro that you guys just saw was all done on here through Final Cut Pro 10 and Motion VFX with their new M Film Look plugin. And I'll show you guys more of that in a little bit, but big thanks to them for sponsoring this video. But yeah, all of that intro was done on this MacBook. This is specifically a 2018 15 inch MacBook Pro with a six core i9 and Vega graphics. So before I jump into Final Cut or really any of the apps that I use on here, I'm gonna show you guys a few little utilities that make things a little nicer looking and just easier to use, starting with Bartender. So Bartender is used to hide menu bar items because sometimes the menu bar can get a little cluttered with everything, so I like to keep it nice and clean like this and you can customize it to keep whatever you want, but. I like nothing on there. Right now you see a little star and a QuickTime player because I'm screen recording, but usually it's just a little star and notification panel on the side. And yeah, that little star represents what Bartender is. When you click on it, you'll see all my stuff, but click on it again and it's gone. And you can actually change that little icon to a different icon or even a picture if you wanted to. Shout out to It's Jackie Wacky. But moving on with Bartender. <laughs> Another thing that you can do is add hotkeys. So if you don't want to click on the little icon on the top right, you can also just add little commands. And I have Command S right now to show the hidden items that I have. But that's basically it. Obviously you can go in and customize what you wanna show, what you don't wanna show. And yeah, I really like using it. It's a great tool to have. Now another really cool utility that you guys should check out is Tooth Fairy. And you can see the two little icons that I have for it right over here in my menu bar. And basically it gives you one click access to any Bluetooth device, but it's gonna be most useful for things like headphones, AirPods. So I have the little headphone icon, my little AirPods icon, and I all I gotta do to connect them is just click on it and <laughs> it's connected. <laughs> I also really love that once it's connected, you can easily see what's connected and what's not because it fills it up. But yeah, this is nothing too crazy or anything. It's just a simple utility that works well. Moving along on the menu bar, this little icon over here is Taurine, which very simply just keeps your Mac awake for as long as you want it to. And there's a bunch of different presets here. You can do eight hours a day, infinite. But really what it comes down to, it's a very easy way of keeping your Mac awake without having to dive into settings and mess with a bunch of sliders. And next up, right next to Taurine, we have Better Touch Tool, which is represented by this little icon. And there's a whole bunch of customization that you can do on here, but I mainly use it to add trackpad gestures and swipes and taps. There's so much stuff. If you've ever found yourself wanting more gestures beyond the ones that Apple gives you, this is perfect. Now, if any of you use Better Touch Tool, I would love to hear the different shortcuts that you guys use in the comments below. But the first one that I put on here is a four finger tap to open Launchpad. Now I know by default, you can just use three fingers and your thumb to pinch and open Launchpad, but I find it easier to just do a simple four finger tap. The next two that I set up is for volume control. So it's a simple two finger swipe to the left for volume down or two finger swipe to the right for volume up. Because sometimes I don't wanna deal with the touch bar so it's just easier to just control all that through my trackpad. Now you guys know how much I love my emojis. So this next one is to control the emoji palette. And you guys know that shortcut is kind of annoying. Like nobody has time for that. Command, control, space bar. So I added a three finger swipe up. Now you can also set up key commands with better touch tools. So this next one I have set up for Final Cut Pro 10. So let's go into there. And this is the intro montage that you guys saw earlier. So I'm gonna play it. And to go full screen, instead of having to go command shift F, which I would usually do to enter full screen, I can just do a simple three finger tap. So I've used Final Cut Pro 10 forever. That's why I used to edit all my videos. And you can see that was 4K footage and it plays buttery smooth. But what we're really focusing on right now is that new plugin from Motion VFX, M Film Look. So M Film Look is a great way to add some cinematic flair to your videos. And it's a very unique plugin because it's an all-in-one. Usually I'd have to go to a bunch of different plugins to get different effects, but this one has a lot of it right here. You can color correct, grade, add different LUTs and lens flares, lens blurs, there's vignettes and letterboxing. It's just crazy how much they pack in this one plugin. So here's a plugin and you can start from scratch right over here, but there's also a whole bunch of different presets down here that look really good. And I also love how you can just scrub through it just to preview it and see it right away in action. But I really like how this one looks for this one. So let's drag it over on top. 
I love the quick access tools right over here because it's really easy to navigate through them. And I also love just how well this plugin performs. Like it feels like it was built into Final Cut because of how fast and responsive it is. But if I want to tweak things like color temperature, I can do that right over here so we can make it warmer or cooler. I'll leave it to the warm side of things. Toggle that on and off to see what that looks like. And also this lens flare, if it's a little bit too strong for you, you can turn down the intensity. Let's turn it down to right about there. I think that looks good. So here's what it looks like before. And here's what it looks like after. So if you're into video and you wanna step up your look, this is hands down the best all-in-one plugin out right now. So if you guys wanna know more about it, make sure you check out that link below. I also love diving into Lightroom and Photoshop for photo editing. I'll usually start with Lightroom and import photos into there first. And as soon as I bring them in, I'll press the auto settings button because that usually makes things look a lot better. But after that, I'll go ahead and tweak everything to make it look even more to my liking. I'll tweak lighting and maybe add a point curve and adjust the colors a little bit. And yeah, most of my photo editing happens in here. I'll then bring this into Photoshop if I want to enhance something like the light fill, maybe add a light fill. This particular photo has a pretty strong natural light fill as it is. And yeah, it doesn't really need anything added, but I will do a lot of light fills to my thumbnails. So I'm gonna show you my Pixel 3a Photoshop file here. This one has a lot of light fills going on. I'll usually add light fills to almost all of my thumbnails to make things look brighter, and in this case, sunnier. And they're really easy to add on your own too. I'll turn these off for a second and just add a new layer for one. I'll take the brush tool, make sure that it is white, filled with white, and I'll just create a little, little blob of white on the side here, make this a little bit bigger, and after that, I'll convert this layer into a linear dodge layer and make sure that fill is not all the way, so it's not super, super strong, just about usually like around 65 is what I do. And then I'll add a hue saturation adjustment layer. From there, you click colorize and bring that saturation all the way up to bump up that color and then hold down option and click on your layer. And right now it looks like we didn't do much other than add a white fill, but after you control the lightness slider, you can see that color come through and you can also control the color with the hue slider. And for this one, I left things more orange and yellow to make it a bit more natural looking. And yeah, I just did a couple of those layers for this thumbnail. So I'll turn this one off and turn the original ones on. And apart from that, I didn't really do too much to this thumbnail. Sometimes I go a little crazier, but for this one, I did separate myself and the phone from the background so that I can make the text go behind me if I wanted to. I kind of didn't go too crazy with that either. It, it's just like a subtle like behind my head, but you can make it look a little more extreme. So here's a thumbnail before I did anything in Photoshop. I did do the lighting and color in Lightroom and then brought it into here. And that's when I added all those light fills, added some text, put it behind me, but that's pretty much it. Nothing too crazy. I do go crazier with thumbnails sometimes, but this is just your basic, typical thumbnail of mine. From there, another one of my go-to apps is Spotify. And I know all of you know about Spotify, but that's my go-to music streaming app. And uh, yeah, I just, I've been using it forever. I love the way it looks. I love Discover Weekly. Also, shout out to Julia Michaels. Everybody go listen to Inner Monologue Part 2 right now. So something else that I do a lot on my MacBook is watch YouTube videos. So this is actually a cool little trick that you could do within Safari and YouTube to get picture in picture. So when you're watching your video, right click once to see that YouTube menu, right click again and scroll down that list to go into picture in picture. And now you get this little window, which is perfect for multitasking. You can do something else while watching your YouTube video. You could go in any corner too. That's really cool. So that's what's on my MacBook Pro, some of my favorite utilities, tips and tricks, different apps that I love using. And if you guys missed any of the videos from the intro montage, I'll link those all below, including the Pixel 3a review that just went up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you later. Wow, that's pretty good. <laughs>